Thank you, Michael. Um, I liked uh, another line that Michael used in his book about why Darwin matters, um, and that's in the prologue where he writes, of the three intellectual giants of that epoch, Darwin, Marx, and Freud, only Darwin is still relevant for the simple reason that his theory was right. Uh, I like that line. QED. <laughs> um, the uh, podium is heavy here under the weight of all the PhDs. We have three PhDs up here on the podium. Unfortunately, like so many other things in life, they are not equitably distributed. Um, I don't have one. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Wells has received two PhDs, one in molecular and cell biology from the University of California at Berkeley, and one in religious studies from Yale University. Um, he is best known these days as a senior fellow at the Center for Science and Culture at the Discovery Institute. He's the author of a book, Charles Hodge's Critique of Darwinism, and another book, Icons of Evolution. And most recently, he is the author of the Politically Incorrect Guide to Darwinism and Intelligent Design, and we have copies of both this and Why Darwin Matters outside, and we invite you to pick up a copy of either or both and to ask the authors to sign them. Please welcome the author of The Politically Incorrect Guide to Darwinism, Jonathan Wells. Thank you. In the 1960s, I was a Berkeley leftist. In fact, I spent a year and a half in prison for my opposition to the war in Vietnam. So I love controversy, and I guess it's a good thing, isn't it? I'm now much older, and I hope wiser. In fact, I'm committed to conservative social values, and I think, like many of you in this room, opposed to big government. Unlike Mr. Shermer, however, I do not embrace Darwinism for the simple fact that it's false. Darwinism is not the same as evolution. Evolution can mean many things, uh, things like change over time or changes within existing species that are utterly uncontroversial. Nobody quarrels with them. By Darwinism, I mean specifically Charles Darwin's theory uh, in its original and modern forms that all living things are descended from a common ancestor modified by natural processes, unguided natural processes, such as random mutation and survival of the fittest. As I learned in the course of earning my PhD in biology at Berkeley, Darwinism is false because it doesn't fit the scientific evidence. This includes the evidence cited by Mr. Shermer in his book, Why Darwin Matters. For example, according to Mr. Shermer, and this is from page 16, fossils speak for themselves, and Darwin's theory of descent with modification is evident in eight intermediate fossil stages identified in the evolution of whales. Yet paleontologists now know that all of those fossils had features they would have had to lose in order to give birth to anything further on in the series. Those so-called transitional forms cannot possibly be members of a single lineage of ancestors and descendants. One might as well line up a series of automobile models to illustrate descent with modification. Indeed, some Darwinists have done this. But we all know that automobiles are designed, not products of unguided natural forces. So the point is that a series of forms does not in and of itself show us anything Darwinian at all. Darwinists acknowledge that living things look designed, but they claim that this is an illusion. Mr. Shermer uses the example of the human eye. Here's a quote from page 17 of his book. Biological structures show signs of natural design. The anatomy of the human eye, in fact, shows anything but intelligence in, the, in its design. It is built upside down and backwards, requiring photons of light to travel through the cornea, lens, aqueous fluid, blood vessels, uh, and various nerve cells before they reach the light-sensitive rods and cones that transduce the light signal into neural impulses. This description is actually incorrect. Uh, the blood vessels are behind the light-sensitive cones and rods. Otherwise, the blood vessels would block most of the incoming light. Indeed, this is the very reason the nerve cells have to be in front of 
the light sensing cells, so the latter, the nerve cells, can be, uh, sorry, so the light sensitive cells can be close to the underlying blood vessels that nourish and renew them. The human eye, in fact, is an extraordinarily efficient video camera that continually regenerates itself, unlike the cameras we make. And no one has succeeded in showing how it could have been designed any better, nor has anyone demonstrated how it evolved through a Darwinian process. Darwinists claim that microevolution, those minor changes within existing species that I said are uncontroversial, if given enough time, will produce macroevolution. This is the origin of new species, organs, and body plans. Microevolution, such as we see in uh, breeds of dogs or varieties of roses, uh, as I said, is uncontroversial. People knew about them long before Darwin came along. But macroevolution has never been observed. And the, the extrapolation from microevolution to macroevolution, in fact, remains controversial today, even among evolutionary biologists. Yet Mr. Shermer cites as an example of macroevolution a 2004 experiment that produced no new species, much less any new organs or body plans. Don't take my word for it. I have the article right here. You can come look at it after the talk. Mr. Shermer also claims that we, this is a quote from page 79, we see evolution at work in nature today, isolating populations and creating new species. But this is false. No one has ever documented the origin of a new species from another by a Darwinian process. Never. Nonetheless, Mr. Shermer concludes, and this is a quote from page 161. Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Shermer just quoted it. Uh, I'll do him the honor of quoting it again. Darwin matters because evolution matters. Evolution matters because science matters. Science matters. Now, I'll point out as an aside here my own comment. Uh, Darwinism is not the same as science. Science is a, a much bigger enterprise. Darwinism is one theory within that enterprise. So I do not equate the two. But to continue with the quote, Science matters because it is the preeminent story of our age, an epic saga about who we are, where we came from, and where we are going. Now, I like a good story as much as the next guy, but science is not about telling stories. Science is about understanding the real world by testing hypotheses against the evidence. Mr. Shermer pays lip service to the evidence, but he actually ignores it, as his book demonstrates, and falls back on a completely different definition of science. Here I'm quoting from page 52. The essence, of, this is not a quote yet, I'm leading up to it. The essence of science is naturalism, which dictates that, quote, life is the result of natural processes in a system of material causes and effects that does not allow or need the introduction of supernatural forces, end quote. Indeed, Mr. Shermer concludes, there is no such thing as the supernatural. This is not empirical science. This is materialistic philosophy. In this respect, Darwin is no different from Marxism and Freudianism. And like them, I predict, it is headed for the dustbin of history. 